Hey guys, I'm James and welcome to another episode of Rubicon Unlimited. Today we're going to take a look at the Uniden CMX 760 and just take a look at my CB radio setup. I finally got one installed. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's go over it. Okay, so why did I go with this radio? And why did I go with CB at all? Well, the guys that I go trail running with, they run CB radios. I felt a little bit left out. It's good to have communication on the trail. So that way you guys, if something goes wrong, stop for lunch, talk about anything, help with winching, you need one of these. It's super useful and it's great to have something hardwired into the Jeep. That way you know that it's powered off the battery and you don't have to worry about carrying extra batteries or something like that. There are other solutions out there. There are other frequencies you can use. You can have a ham radio. You can get one of those GMRS radios or FRS radios, and those are great handheld. But like I said, this is my main mounted to the Jeep radio. And the reason why I went with this specific model is it is super compact. Pretty much the only thing you see is this mic. Everything else is hidden under the glove compartment. So I'm gonna show you all that and what it looks like. These things are pretty much built for Jeeps and off-road vehicles because, you know, we like the compact size. We just have it mounted right here and everything's solid. So let's talk about some of the features here on the CMX 760 Uniden CB radio. Uh, so if we dive right into our menu, we have the ability to change the screen color, kind of fancy. I mean, why not? Um, I personally like to keep this thing on green because it kind of matches the rest of the uh, radio and you know climate control color. So leave it on that. We've also got a dimmer, so that will change the brightness. We also have contrast, so yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Key beep, Roger on beep, battery check. Uh, what else does this thing have? Well, we also have our channel 9, channel 19 quick button, so that'll just jump us right to that. Uh, we have our weather, so if we hit our weather channel. That's pretty awesome. I like that. Uh, we also have weather alerts, so say uh, a storm is rolling through. The weather channel will just jump on and let you know what's going on. That's pretty nifty, I love that. Uh, we have our squelch button here, and if we just run through that, you'll see that it's a stepped control, uh, and we have seven steps of squelch. Some people might not like that because it's not the dial that you can just like fine tune. Uh, personally, I haven't had an issue with it, so far so good. Uh, we have our scan button and we have a high low cut um, Which is also nice This thing also remembers What power setting you have it on so what I mean by that right now? I have it set to on so I have this wired to my ignition switch So whenever I turn the key on the radio turns on so that's cool if I didn't want that all I have to do is turn it off now when I turn the key on it stays off, so it remembers the power setting. I love that. It's a nice, uh, comfortable microphone. It's got the button on the side and our standard little mount on the back. So that's about it here. And the brains of this whole thing is shoved under my glove box. So uh, why don't we do a walk around, take a look at what that thing looks like, I'll tell you about where I wired this thing and you know, what kind of antenna I use and all that fun stuff. So yeah, let's take a look. Cool, now let's take a look at the brains of this thing. So I've got it in the glove compartment because it doesn't take up that much room at all. I love it. So here it is. Look how tiny that thing is, it's like it fits in the palm of my hand. It just nestled in here. Um, this is actually attached to one of the mounts that it comes with, which is super cool. So, you know, you have options. This thing just slides right in. 
I pretty much just put it in here as a protective little little thing. Um, otherwise, if you take a look at the back of this, we have our antenna connection, we have an external speaker connection, and we have our power. Uh, now the microphone speaker over here, our hand unit, uh, it comes with a five foot extension cable. So that's a beautiful thing, you know, especially if you're putting this thing in your glove compartment, that way you can route your, your mic anywhere you want and that's uh, pretty convenient. Um, the power cable here, as you can see, I have it routed in my glove box and that ends up going, the power, to my cigarette uh, power, which is, you know, right here by the climate controls. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted that key on position. So when I turn on the key to the second position, and the power to the Jeep is on, the radio turns off, right? I don't want this thing accidentally left on overnight and then my battery's dead in my Jeep. So that's the reason why I wanted that. And then I grounded it out on the body over here. Uh, you have options to do whatever you want. You can run it to the battery in, uh, in the Jeep just directly. Uh, a lot of people prefer that. So that's an option to you there. At the front of the Jeep, we need a spot to mount our microphone. Now, now the kit comes with its own little plastic mount. It isn't anything too incredible. Um, it's nice they provide this. You could stick it wherever you want. You could drill it in wherever you want. But for me, you know, I didn't want to have to do that to the Jeep. So I went out and I uh, sourced this really nifty grab handle mount. It's a flexible piece of plastic. And what it'll do is it'll sandwich right here on the grab bar, kind of giving it a factory look. The brand's called Jeep Unique. And they have all sorts of mounts for different radios. So if you're not specifically using this radio, there might be something else from these guys that will uh, you might find useful. So we'll quickly install this thing. It should be a piece of cake. All right, so step one, remove this thing. And we've got these faux bolts over here. And like I said, they're faux, which means they're fake just for a rugged styling. So don't shove a hex bit in there. You'll probably break it. Instead, use a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna pry this whole plastic piece off. If you have one of those trim removal tools, go ahead and use that. But you know, this is what I got done. Comes off real easy. We got an eight millimeter socket. Whole thing pops out. Now we're gonna grab our beauty little mount here and it's gonna fit right on the end. As you can see here, we're just gonna slide it over. I twist it in. Look at that. This thing's gonna look great on here. Cool, cool, cool. Reinstall. And just tighten that bad boy down. Tighten down. Everything's like how it was. Get our trim plate. Snap it back in. Wow, quickest install ever. And look how flush, beautiful factory that looks. Moment of truth. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect spot for this thing. I love it. Comes off real easy. Accessible. Good spot. So the next thing that I took care of was obviously mounting the antenna. Let's get this thing out of the way. So what we got here is a fire stick. We have the spring mount. We have the stud and I went with a fire ring, which is how you run the cable from the antenna all the way over to the box in the glove compartment. Now there's something pretty specific about mounting your antenna. 
you have to make sure it's got a good ground. So, like I said, we have our Springer, and then we have our stud and our fire ring coax cable. And you can see here, it's mounted to this TerraFlex high, high lift uh, mount. You can kind of see with this mount and a lot of the other mounts, they're powder coated, which means you're not gonna get any kind of grounding. So this fire ring actually requires you to remove the paint so that it has a direct contact with the steel of this mount. I wasn't gonna do that because I live in Canada and guess what? Any kind of exposed metal is gonna corrode. Uh, so I didn't like that idea. So I opted for running a secondary wire here. And that is touching the firing uh, contact for the ground. And that is running all the way inside the Jeep with the coax cable. And I have it grounding out on the tub of the Jeep. And that's very important because a lot of people don't realize these antennas need to be grounded out. If not, you're gonna have a horrible signal and you know, what's the point of running a CB if the signal is horrible? Also worth noting, if you do decide to grind the powder coat off this mount, you also have to consider what the mount is attached to. So this one here is on the hinge of the Jeep. Uh, everything has powder coat on it. So even though you grind the, the powder coat off where the antenna is mounted to, that's not enough. You also have to consider this mount. This needs to be grounded then. So it's kind of like a chain that you need to make sure ends up grounding out to something substantial like the Jeep or the negative turn terminal of your battery. Wow, check out this angle. Okay, so now we're gonna quickly talk about the antenna. Like I said, it's on a spring because, you know, when you're driving through the bush or you forget that you're, you have an antenna when you're going shopping in a shopping mall, any kind of parking garage, you're gonna whack this thing. So the spring, you know, gives us some relief. And this is a tunable fire stick. This is the three foot and you want to go for the tunable one because it, it has a simple screw on the top that you can adjust um, as opposed to having to shave it down and get the right length. So I prefer the tunable tip and all these things, like I said, the coax cable, the CB radio, the springer, the antenna. I'll leave links below. And if you decide to purchase any of those, there'll be Amazon affiliate links. I get a small percentage. It doesn't come out of your pocket. It actually comes out of Amazon's pocket. So I do appreciate if you use those links, it does help the channel. Okay, one other thing that you're gonna wanna consider is you gotta tune your CB radio. So you need an SWR meter and that'll hook in line with the antenna cable just before you get to the unit that I have in my glove compartment. There are tons of videos online of how to do that. And, you know, the only other thing you're going to need to pick up if you, you're interested in doing this is an SWR meter. And I can leave another link for one of those. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in to this episode of RubeCon Unlimited. I really hope some of this information was helpful to you guys. And if you uh, find this content useful, I make a lot of these videos. So if you want to hit the subscribe button, that would help me out. If you want to pick up any of the uh, products that you see here, there's Amazon links below. Also, I've got these hats, little uh, willies on the side, Wrangler on the front. If you want to pick those up, I'll also leave a link for that. I make these things myself. I design them. Uh, so yeah, that would help the channel as well. Appreciate all you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.